I have a little hobby of experimenting things and that's where I come from. I try to research different aspects of security with respect to how do you build, how do you really build a secure system? And what I'm trying to share with you is how do you really bring security elements when you are building a, a, a system? So my presentation would be about that part. Okay. A little bit more about me. I'm a vegetarian and I was brought up this way and now I'm trying to stay this way. Okay. I like tea. I know most Americans, including my own children, they love coffee, but I'm a little different. I, I like tea. And like I said, I'm a quality champion. I like to bring changes as they fit into the system and try to improve the overall processes we build software with. And like I said before, I would like to share my thoughts with others. Hopefully there are some learnings into those thoughts. Okay. Let me go over with the objectives I have here. I want to just briefly represent this fact that you don't have really, really solid breach patterns. I appreciate top OWASP top 10 and they were they're a great outline, but you never know how you can be breached. Okay. Then we're going to look at how do you bring security into your software development lifecycle. Most of our developing our products, our applications using agile development. So I want to show you how do you really want to, how would you bring security into that environment? Okay. And how do you do or conduct a multi-stage testing, including pen testing? And when you have done all that, what are the rewards? What do you really get to be proud of? Okay. I haven't mentioned this, the, the security breaches are increasing all the time. This data is a little bit old, but it is a fact here that we are constantly under threat with some new tools or some way, new ways of, 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 of hacking. Okay? And they are, the hack, hacking is in all, all areas of our life. Banking, for example, big time. Healthcare, also big time. It has lots of uh, PPI, so we really have seen a lot of hacking in that area. They are vulnerable systems. Ransomware, ransomware, it goes from individuals to the governments where, where people pay or, or the nation level where people, companies pay big, big amount of money to deal with the vulnerable uh, once, they, once they have been hijacked. And government itself is an area where breaches are taking place. What this slide tells you is there are multiple areas where uh, vulnerabilities are being exploited. Okay? Now, I explained that to you, no breach pattern. There will be a little bit more evidence of that. I'm going to give you a few cases where breach took place for different reasons. If you look at Facebook, Facebook breach happened by stolen user access tokens. I don't think I will have the time to go into every one of those, details of every one of those. If you look at uh, European Bank, European Bank was breached through a malware injection by a third party. By, for a third party application. Uh, parameter tempering, first American Home Buyers Protection Corporation was breached by parameter tempering. And then Disney was breached by credential stuffing where data was already st stolen. And then hackers went again with their data and they had Disney Plus right away. Okay. The other fact here is, the breach lasts for a long time, 266 days. There is a reference at the bottom, 197 days before zero day, and then it takes 69 days to contain contain um, the breach. Okay, so it's expensive. You lose money, you lose customer lo loyalty, and you may have litigations to come through to to deal with. Okay? 
if you look at the cost of fixing a, a vulnerability from looking at how it rises between design and deployment, you're spending 100 times more money to fix the vulnerability once the product has been released. So we really need to be aware of this fact when we think about how much effort should we put into design and de development. What I have been doing, most of the companies, I think, and I have heard, are doing penetration testing. Great. There are some things about penetration testing. It's, it's an art of finding known vulnerabilities. That's why I asked Aaron a question if he would consider penetration testing as an experimentation, which I think is, is the right thing to say. It works very well for networks and operating systems, especially networks. And the tools we have today, they're not very effective. They have limited effectiveness. Finally, it's way later in the life cycle. Really, at the end of the, the when the product is, is all built, that's when we do penetration testing. It's just too late to fix things, turn things around and fix things up. Okay? To me, it sounds like early COVID systems checking. Yeah, yeah. We're just looking at some, some symptoms there. Okay? What's better? bring in security elements into your life cycle as you design the product and code the product. How do we do that? Let's look at that. Okay. Now first, why should we do that? First of all, I just told you about how long does it take to contain a breach 266 days on an average. Okay. The cost of fixing something once things have been breached. Okay developers repeat mistakes. Some of you may not, will not, hopefully not. Okay. We have open source dependencies. The code you're, you're putting together depends on so many other, other software pieces like your platform, there are open source applications you may be using. And there are source depends, dependencies. You may give piece of your application or part of the application to be developed by someone else and they're going to use different techniques methods which you may or may not know and that's a dependency there too okay. so now let me show you how let me show you or let me explain how my ideas fit into into your agile development okay. first of all you include your security stories in your backlog and i'll show you how to do that So if you look at the cycle of, of a story in agile development, you're going to have a acceptance criteria for a security story. You have a story, you'll have an acceptance criteria for the story, and then you will define some security controls. Okay? That is the initial phase when you are really, when you have a story and you are trying to deal with it. Even in a normal story, you, wish, you should look at if there is any security risk there or what should be the control at that point. Okay. When we go to defining stories, let's take a story, set the shopping cart total to zero. This is a hacker here. And, and then the, the customer is trying to provide the information about the credit card. Okay. And the customer is thinking that my information should not be stolen. Then as a developer, you are trying to de develop a secure product. No one should be able to force privilege escalation, for example. And as a security engineer, you are trying to make sure the overall operation of the application is secure. So what I have just explained here is different personas, different, different actors involved when it comes to taking your security in an agile development. Okay? And they all would have a role to play. They would all have use cases to deal with. Okay? 
security engineer would think website should be up and running during business hours. So let's just look at customer, customer story development, and we will take a very simple story. As a user, my personal information is protected and not exposed to others. Okay? And what I'm also saying is, at the entry, the information should be protected. In transition, the information should be protected. And when it's stationary, it should be protected at that point. It should the integrity and only authorized people should be able to see it when the information is stationary. Okay, so let's look at the acceptance criteria. So now we have three different layers here. First layer is client, which is trying to enter the information and then we move the data down to the web server and finally to the database. Okay, so I'm just taking with the customer level. Customer would like to see the data entry is hidden when they're entering the data. Okay? And for that, we will have a security control. In transition, when the data is moving on the, on the wire, we need to main, maintain the confidentiality. And then when you are on the server side, data should be accurate, integrity should be maintained, and only authorized user can see the data is not just the, the user, but also the processes can see the data. So if I look at further down, how do I build security controls for these things, which are my checks and balances for security, I would say on the portal, the data should not, the critical data should not be displayed. For example, and we are implementing that already, for example, the password should not, should be, should be should not be in text form. Okay? When I go to the next level where I'm transiting the data, I should transit the data through a secure socket layer and the data should be encrypted. Those are my security controls to maintain data confidentiality. Now, we may come up with, with more than that. This is just a simple example here. So now if you go to the database side, Excuse me. We want to validate the business logic before we store the data. We want to encrypt the data. It may be the same encryption that we have used for transmitting the data and then follow the least level of privilege. So I have what I have now is, is an exceptions criteria for this story. And I'll, I also have security controls. At this point, I feel like I know what I'm going to test against. Okay. So now let's put it all into a, a life cycle. We're going to talk about the modeling and the, the thread modeling. Some of you, I'm, I'm sure most of you have seen this is tried model of thread modeling. So let's not go deep into that. But I just took a few stories here, a few stories that I would have my agile development. And I very simple, with very simple technique where I'm trying to see if there is a, a threat or not, or what's the level of threat. I just put a yes or no. So browse to site, I said it's spoofing, uh, threat is not there, but I think the denial of service can happen. So with this simple scheme, I came up with, or you can come up with any 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 quantify or any quality or a quantifiable result where you can say you can you can scale your thread based upon the stories. So in this particular case, I I login happens to have the high thread. So I want to make sure that I take care of that story, which is logging into the system into the web application seriously. Okay. Now, how do I, there are other things you can do. You can use uh, design and, con, and, and coding principles as well. And there are a few written, few I have displayed here. Defense in depth is one, uh, feel secure. Aaron talked about it. Least privileges where you would by default assign least privileges to any user. Make sure you are protecting your weakest link, weakest code, 
and then also aware being aware of other components like you have any internal components you're using or a third party component or any open source open source software you're using so there's a different design and coding principles now let's go to the the testing strategy along along sdlc okay there are code is based upon the code state you have raw code and you have executable code for raw code you can do your sast design and coding design review code review and then you can see what the risks there are okay for executable side you can do a quick assessment using scanners dast you need to have formal security requirement testing that could be automated because this is the secure this is the 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 these are the the red team people who will make sure your your stories are are good and then finally penetration testing because you do want to test like a hacker okay so there is your sast on when the code state is raw and there is your tast when you are trying to do a trying to do validation of your executable code Code reviews are simple. They they look at the develop, develop environment. You see if your design and algorithm is good, and your coding you're following code, coding standards. The problem with with code reviews is that it's time consuming, and, and you need an expert to do the code reviews. Also you have your quality engineer should also be thoroughly capable of doing code reviews okay? then if you look at sast where you're trying to to do design reviews the things like you the things you want to see is is there any buffer overflow is there a possibility of injection flaws uh, you can have something integrated into a ci cd tools like zap would work for something like this there is you may have some false outcome and then you may have you would definitely have a tool cost unless you're using a, a, a an open source tool or you will have some maintenance cost there so then we go into dast which is using the scanner again and then formal qa where you are really formally testing every single security story for example uh, is the password following the requirement i am trying to to put into my application which is like minimum number of characters in special characters these will be tested in formal qa okay. your scanner will get you common vulnerabilities you have to have the testing of uh, formal testing against your acceptance criteria. Once again, it's a regular process. You will have tools and you'll have to maintain those. Okay. Finally, we have penetration testing. And here we are testing for targeted vulnerabilities, whatever is not working properly. Or how can somebody else how will somebody else will hack the system how will a hacker hack the system okay the other thing which also should be taken care of is system hardening where we are making sure that the overall system environment is configured to what we need and any default settings are not there in the system any applications that should not be used or components of the system that should not be used they are not turned on so that's system hardening okay so if you want to change these things in a life cycle you will do code reviews go to sast from there code review you will find some issues and those issues should be then taken over to your formal testing in dast and then once you have that you go to your penetration testing 
where you'll be testing like a heck. Now, how do we really put them all together into this life cycle here? So first of all, you will have your security controls, like I have given you an example of, and then you will be able to see what kind of risk we are, we are carrying here on the system. Okay? Then you will do your code reviews, your SAST. This all is happening in one iteration. Then you will do your DAST. Okay. Finally, you will be doing your security story testing. I'll give you an example of that. And this is how you will embed different security activities into your life cycle. Let me highlight one more thing here. If we, in an agile development, we go from iteration to iteration. So let's see you are in iteration number three, and there are stories which according to stride have a higher higher threat okay? then and then you go to the next iteration then you find out that this is story let's say for example there was a story in in this current in the in the in this iteration which had a a number of let's say four and then you go to the next iteration you find another story where you have the threat value of five, then you want to make sure that you give priority to the story which threat value of five compared to the previous iteration story, which was threat value of four. That's how you will really maintain the optimal, maintain the, the, maintain the, the low threat level by addressing the high threat story first. I mentioned pen testing that happens right before once the registration is, is complete. Now you are trying to, to build the system and take that those stories into your into your system. That, then you will do pen testing there. Okay. The balancing act of validation, I gave you the example of the, how the story should, should work, how you should take the stories with higher threat impact, consider those first before you go to the other story, which has lower threat impact. Okay? And this is exactly what I'm saying, compare stride scores of existing stories with the size scores of untested stories for, um, from previous situation. This is the balancing um, concept here. Okay? And when you test the stories, you test the stories in, in that order. Okay. And towards when you are towards the, the iteration end of the iteration, then you see how do we have risk mitigation? What risk we should we should how what how do we mitigate the risk which may have we, we may have from the stories that are left over? This is more important towards the end of the system, okay? Because that's when you can look at the overall picture and then you can prepare yourself for that. Okay. Benefits, you are always trying to push the security towards developers and early in the life cycle. Okay. And every story undergoes a security risk assessment. Okay. And we do that by establishing security controls, and that gives an idea what kind of, including stride, what kind of risk we have for this particular for this particular story. Okay. And then, like I explained to you, high risk stories are are paid due attention. They are addressed first before the other low risk stories. And we do testing early, we do testing often, and we do testing throughout the life cycle using both SAST tools and DST tools. And then pen test confirms security against external threats. These are the benefits. The, the biggest thing I can say at this point is you are bringing security elements very early. You're being logical about it. 
your, your testing is based upon security controls and what the threat is. Okay. Once you have the threat level estimated, then you can try to mitigate, you can try to build some mitigate, mitigate, mitigation plans and prepare for the release. This is kind of some, to some extent, this kind of chaos engineering at this point. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple of uh, sayings here, a couple of statements people have made. This is, uh, sorry, Liz Rice, she's a technology evangelist. And what she's saying is, if you can push security as far as you can towards developers, it's a good thing because you can catch problems earlier. Dependency graph can shift security very far left. And that's what we are trying to hit here. Jimanico, who is also participating in this conference here, he, he says software engineers are security engineers. These are the people involved with the application. They know what the weak links are in the code, and they, they also know what is secure and unsecure. We need to really excite them, bring them in early to make things happen to get a better secure, better and secure product. Okay? Now for the questions, we are going to go to a different room, the Slack channel. And the Slack channel is, is 20th anniversary OWASP standards. So we will see you there in that room. Um, if you have any questions, both me and Aaron would be there to answer questions. <laughs>